the preach word, let him down deeper in your word that he may feed your sheep and feed your lamb. Lord, these and other blessings we ask in Jesus' perfect name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Say God bless Bishop Curtis as he come with the word. God bless you, Bishop. Time, time, time is running up. Time, time, Lord, time is winding up. Oh, destruction in the land. And God don't move his hand. Oh, time is winding up.
children, you know, come to church. And when Sunday school is open, I think they again they ought to make sure that they come to Sunday school. But nowadays, folk just don't have a tendency to care about church anymore and 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 show sure enough the part that will help the children. They keep them away from it. But if I were you, I would get in a hurry. Is that right? Yeah. I would get in a hurry and make sure that I have my kids in Sunday school by PLJ so they can learn the way of the Lord. Maybe by chance we may detour some of all this killing and, you know, and, and, and officers killing uh, young men. Maybe if by chance if we bring them to Sunday school, That's bring right. them to the Lord, maybe they may change the environment and it may make it a little better for them. Yeah. Maybe they may change some things in life. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We're looking for some things that they can do. That's right. Amen. So they can live longer. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm somewhat, you know, discouraged. To see so many losing their lives, amen, shot down, and, and so forth and so on. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm praying that God step in, that that's going to take God, amen. and make a change in this, amen. Uh, I heard different one talking about America, <clears throat> but, you know, uh, may I say this tonight, that black men love America. Yeah, 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 they do. Black men love America. Black men that went to war. <clears throat> During my time, 1965, uh, I know that there was some young men that were raised up with me in 1964. They, they volunteered and went to Vietnam. Amen. They volunteered and went to Vietnam. They fought in the war. And they lost their life. That let me know that they love America. Amen. The young man that showed his picture, you know, on TV he could have been a great athlete. I always wonder why did he go to the army? You know, uh, Cleopas Harrison. They had his picture on TV the other night. We called him 13. But he was one of the first. He went over and he lost his life. All right. He Cleopas, he was more taller than all of us and and somewhat stronger than we were. He the set of weights he had, he was about a year ahead of me. The set of weights he had, he made them. And and before he left, he came and gave me his weights. All right. And I was one of the few boys that blunt back then that lift weights. So we we know and then another young man we call Squeaky. And his name, last name was Stolberg, but he went to Vietnam and lost his life. Then younger men went there and lost their life. And and they put it all on the line. So nobody don't have to tell me, but I know that black men love America. They have given their lives for America. Amen. Tonight, I didn't mean to say all that, but you know, that been on my mind especially when I see Kiriofa's picture, you know, on, uh, it was honoring, honoring the uh, veteran that had lost their life, you know, in wars. He was a young man that I played football with. Tonight we're looking in the Word of God, and we won't be before you too long. We're looking at St. Matthew 13 and 36, we're going to talk a little in the word about parables. Yeah. So let us see here. Then Jesus sent the multitude away. The Bible said, then Jesus sent the multitude away. And went into the house. The Bible said he, he did what? He went into the house. Into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, mm -hmm. his, his disciples, we know this, this <clears throat> particular parable, his disciples. 
disciple came to him and asked him about this one. And the Bible says they came to him saying, Declare unto us mm -hmm. the path. Some things as uh, church members and ministers, we just want to know. All right. Amen. I, I really picked some of this up from the disciples and other Bible folks. Oftentimes, it's the thing they really wanted to know. And we notice one thing about Jesus, too. Oftentimes, he teach different things. He would take his disciples Amen. to the side, certain ones anyway, and tell them what he really meant. Sometimes we need to ask the Lord, Lord, let us know. Give us the revelation of your word. Yeah, tell God when you're studying and you're going over different things, you don't understand. And you, know, and you finish your study and you still don't understand. Talk to God about it. Amen. Tell the Lord, say, Lord, give me what you're really saying, what you really mean, what you want me to do, how you want me to say it. You know, God is good enough and he's a great God that he wants you to know anyway. Yeah, and then he will reveal it to you. Somebody said, well, I thought God was a spirit. You'll find out that a spirit can talk to you. All right. God can reveal it to you. He'll bring it to you one way or the other. You know, there's, there's times when you are studying a lesson and, and maybe you didn't quite get that lesson. God will let somebody else come on and teach the same lesson. And sometimes when you're preaching the message, and maybe some things you want to say you didn't say it, someone else come on the radio and preach the same message and say the thing that you did not say. And you know, the message is gonna get out. It's gonna get out. God wanna, He wants to use you. He wants to use your personality. Amen. Amen. So here, that's why we as ministers have to keep our vessels clean. Yeah, unspotted, unspotted, and not living an up and down life. Because so somebody is watching you, somebody see you. Amen. Some folk, you know, they do some of everything and then try to come to the pulpit and preach the word of God. You need to clean up. All right. Amen. Then after you clean up, sometimes you need to sit down because somebody knows. And, and you you could call someone to go the other way. I think you ought to be truly sanctified. Amen. I think you ought to be truly holy. And some folks think they, they can do all this stuff out in the world and then come and stand in God's pulpit. But I want you to know in the old Bible days, I don't I mean to get here, but in the old Bible days, if you went in the holy of holy, and that priest, they tied a rope on him, he had bells on him. Oh, as long right. as they hold the head, as long as they heard the bells, yeah. you know, they was all right. But when they put, when them bells stopped, oh, right. you see them dragging you out of that quick. Yeah. Cause they knew that you were going to die. But anyway, today we're talking about the parables. Amen. I, I put it like this in my own word. A parable is a brief story to make a point. Uh, uh, that that one that when you doesn't understand it, uh, it, 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 God gave parable to make you understand Amen. what He was talking about. A brief story to make a specific point. Mm, uh, this code, uh, he he made it plain so you can understand what uh, he really was talking about. And, and, and we seen in Psalms, I think it's Psalms uh, 78. Let, let's see what Psalms 78 and 2 say. It, it tells about God going to speak in parables Amen. in days to come. Let's see what it say. I will open my mouth. God said he will open his mouth. In a parable. In parable. Amen. I will utter dark things of old. Mm-hmm. 
which we have heard and known. God, God had told that he was going to do that back then. You know, we see that the psalmist talked about it. And now we see that Christ is beginning to talk in parable. And that's another way we know that Jesus is God. That's right. Because he was saying that he was going to do this. And now we see in St. Matthew and, 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 and others days, you know, the disciples say he spoke in parables to them and to the other people. Other people sometimes didn't understand, but his disciples, they understood. And, and if they didn't understand, he would take them to the side. Amen. And make sure they understood what that parable meant. This particular parable tonight, we're talking about, they want to know specifically what this really means. Wheat and the tail. Amen. Come on, let, we, 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 we're into the part where he's explaining it. Matthew. Matthew uh, 13 and 36 to about the 43rd verse. Come on. He answered and said unto he them. Answered. Then Jesus uh, sent the multitude away. And went into the and house. Went into the house. And his disciples, and his disciples came, came unto him, saying, saying, Declare unto declare us, unto us the, the parable of the, the tares of the, tares of the field. Of the field. Uh -huh. He so, answered and said unto them. The seventh said that he answered and said. Unto them. He that soweth the good seed. Listen, he's telling you what he's, he talked about earlier. Amen. In uh, Matthew's uh, 13 and 24, he, that was the, the parable of the wheat and tare. Amen. Now he's explained it. I, I thought I'd just, you know, get to this part. This is what you really need here. And he, he that Bible soweth says, the good seed. The Bible tells that he that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. That's God. Amen. He tells you the Son of Man. He is the one that sowed the good seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He is the one that sowed good seed. And what? The field is the word. Okay, he said, and the field. Talked about the field. Yeah. Talked about the seed. Amen. And Christ is the one. He said he's the one that sowed the good seed, the son of man, and the field is the world. And the good seed are the children of the kingdom. Now we see who the seed is. Uh, the good seed is the who? It's the son of the kingdom. Amen. Mm -hmm. And the field is the world. Yeah, the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. It's the saints of God. The saints of God is the good seed. Mm -hmm. But the tares. And but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Of the children of the wicked one. Now you got tare. Amen. And you got Wheat, yeah, growing together. Mm -hmm. Tear and wheat growing together. Some of the old teaching. How I many remember the old teaching? Yeah. The old teaching we had said wheat and tear look alike. That's right. It, it's so it's so close, and it's not even good to mess with it. Amen. It's best to come down to leave it alone. Let it grow. Amen. 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 Let it grow together. And sometimes you got uh, good folk in your church. Then you got some bad folks. That's right. They be so close. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They be so close. It's best sometimes to leave them alone. Amen. 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 Leave them alone. And, and then, then you find out oftentimes that you don't have to. You don't have to pull them up. Sometimes some are just glow, they're leaving. Uh -huh. Some 
some folk go and they run and try to get them. Yeah, I, you know, I, I put forth for effort. But I see that they want to be out there anyway. Sometimes they a older, a older uh, minister told me, he said, well, see, everybody's not sheep. She said, some of those folk you going after, and, and they say anything and do anything, continue to do over and over. He said, they're not sheep. To their goats. He said, just let them go. <laughs> you know, when me being a young man, I kind of look across that. Uh, you know, sometimes we feel like we need safe one. Right. But God is able to replace every one of us. All right, Pastor. You have to know that you, you, we are the one that need God. We need Him. We need what God has. We shouldn't be so arrogant that we think that God needs me. That's right. God is able to take one grain off of your off your grave and make more people. And then we make them even make them better than That's right. what we were. Amen. We need God. Yeah. And you ought to thank God that somebody can need. You know, somebody says something to you. And then, then oftentimes folks are doing so many things in the church that prove who you are. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, sometimes, uh, sometimes the Lord, you know, he's he going to prove you out. He's going to be proving who you really are. And I was saying the other week, sometimes when, it, when, when things happen to you, you think you are where you ought to be. And then and you, 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 you go back and do some easy things. I think God loves you. Oh, wow. <laughs> I do. I, yeah, I think he, he loves me. He do. He loves me. I think he, he, he let things be revealed. When I said things, he let you know that you are not where you ought to be. Amen. When you go out and do, do those things, huh? You find out what you really are. I think you ought to come to the altar. Yeah. Go, really go back down in the pool first, and come to the altar, and show sure up. Receive the Holy Ghost because you see that you you are not living a saved and a sanctified life. You're not living like God wants you to live, and you you, you should thank God that you didn't die in that state. Oh, okay. I, I better move on, y'all. Long than what I think. Yeah, you better thank God. Yeah. That God didn't let you die. That He let it be revealed to you who you really are. Uh, and believe me, you, you, you're not living a saved and a sanctified life. Shack it up. All right. May I say that? That's right. Getting drunk. Doing a uh, controlled substance and other heedious things going against God's commandments, committing adultery and fornication. No, you, you're not living like God wants you to live. And you cannot go into God's kingdom like that. I thank God when God that thing be revealed to you and you get it right with God, showing up right with him, hallelujah, you'll be willing to do anything God asks you to do. When God gives you the second chance, Amen. Come on, come on. Let's, let's, let's get back to the lesson. The enemy that sold them is the devil. Okay. The enemy that sold not the good seed now. That's right. But the evil seed. Uh-huh. Yeah. The enemy who sold the cow. Yeah. He is the devil. Yeah. I never will forget that one of the pastors I had, he said, well, it's all kind of folks in the church. He said, there's a group there. Huh? He didn't just say who put them there. He said, but they're going to keep you praying. And that's the group sometimes, you know, the enemy sold some. Some going to be in the church, in this building. I better say it that way, in the building. And that group will keep you praying all the time. 
But it's God's will that every one of us be baptized in Jesus' name. Every one of us care to receive the Holy Ghost or receive the Holy Ghost by laying on hands or by caring. Huh? Or you received it while the minister was preaching the word of God that you have received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yeah. You need that. You need that so the enemy won't get the glory out of your life. Amen. Yeah, that, that seed, that evil seed, Amen. that one seed, the one that caused a lot of trouble all the time, the one that want to belittle the church, talk about the church, misuse the church, trying to tempt God, mm -hmm. they have been sold. By, according to the word, That's right. been sold by the devil. By the devil. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the one that's been sold by the devil is going to keep the saints praying. Amen. You're going to you find out. You're going to stay right on your knees. I heard some of the old saints at Philip Temple years ago. I thank God for the devil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I didn't know what they were talking about, yeah. but it, yeah, the devil. You know, he was done his part. I don't ever thank God for one, though. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. He had to do with that another level. Mm -hmm. But the devil was so tapped around. The devil would put the enemy on your job and keep you praying. Believe me, he keep you praying. I seen him on the job that I used to work, work on. Came, I, I used to pray. We called it the Cali Gap. It was a, a little highway that we drove down, they called it the Cali Gap. And, uh, and as I drove, going down there, going to our office, I was sure enough praying every day, Lord, be with me. And, and, and read that my, my Bible, that God would be with me all day long. And you know what? And the Lord kept me. He kept me on that job 22 years. And I had a lot of trials and tribulations. And but I went through. I seen the enemy on the job. I knew the enemy. And God gave me how to handle myself among the enemy. God would do the same thing with me. He will give to you how to live a holy and a sanctified life among the enemy, among those who the devil has sown around you. And you find yourself living stronger and a better life and a life that, you know, that they over a period of time, you, you can live so around them that they will leave you alone. Amen. Leave you alone. And you find that sometimes you can live so that they would what, say good things about you. Amen. And they, they might well speak good things that they didn't really want to say. Amen. Come on, what, what else, Mother Kirk? The harvest is the end of the world. Okay, we found out that the world, the world more or less, was like the field. Mm -hmm. And the harvest is what? The end oh. of the world. Mm -hmm. And the reapers are the angels. And the reapers are the angels. Amen. And? As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. The Bible said that what? The tare? What's going to happen? Are gathered and burned in the fire. The angels going to gather, uh -huh. they're going to gather the chair, bundle it up, and burn it in the fire. Amen. You shouldn't want to go. You shouldn't want to go out that way. You shouldn't want to what be burned in the fire. You ought to want to be gathered with the wheat and not with the chair. Because it got to be burned up. Amen. It's no good. It's no good. What, what is good is the wheat. 
Yes, they would. Amen. God wants you to come out of the world. Amen. And leave the world alone. Amen. I, I was, I was, you know, communicating with the Lord, and the Lord brought, brought it to me that people and our time church folk think that they can actually sin, they can sin and do things, and it's all right with God. It's just sin. No, sin is going to keep you out of the kingdom. Sin will determine what you are. If you're a sinner and you're still hanging on in the church, I think you're a tear. Mm -hmm. You're a tear. But those who don't commit sin, I see you as being weak. Amen. 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 That's the way I, you know, I, I'm sorry you don't see it that way. But you, you should be in church. You got special days that you commit sin. Special days that you do right. And then you're going to come to church or you got a special one you go to and confess to those special one that you did certain things that you think are right. No, you, you, you're not all right. All right. You sin and will for that. And when you sin and will for that, then you automatically out with God. God wants you to live a sanctified Jesus. and a holy life every day of your life. Amen. And I want you to know that God, yes, he does, he sees you. It's not about me. It's not about others. But God sees you. And coming to church, serving God and worshiping God, is a part of what saints do. Amen. Amen. Yeah. It is a bit part of what saints do. We serve the true and the living God. And in serving God, this opened the door for us to go into God's kingdom. If you don't live it, you, you're not going. Uh-uh. You're not going. You're not going in this kingdom. Amen. And, and more or less, the Lord let you know what happened to, to Tal. Amen. Tal, it burned, it bundled up, and it burned. Yeah, and the angels breathed it, go out and get it, and Amen. it bundled up, and it burned. Those are people who are, what, living a sinful life. Now, it, it's, it's just something that God don't want you to do. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to deliver you from sin. Amen? Amen. Well, everybody don't know this. Some folks still think, well, I can go out and sin and, and, and do like they did in the days of old. But uh, I, I keep telling the same thing. You can't do those things. Uh, the Bible let us know what happened in David's day, in Solomon's day, yeah, Jeremiah. That day, and those days the Lord winked at it. That means God closed his eyes and right. material that he didn't see it. But now the Lord is requiring every man everywhere to live a holy and a sanctified life. That's everywhere because you can do it. And it's true that you cannot do it. You just can't live a holy and a sanctified life without the Holy Ghost. You can go for a while, you can be a good person, but sooner or later you're going you, you to step up. You need the Holy Ghost to speak to you. And when the Holy Ghost doesn't speak to you, it doesn't keep you, heard one young man said, well, the Holy Ghost is not a keeper. Yes, he is. Amen. Holy Ghost, when you want to be kept, God will keep you. God is not a God that forced any of us God won't force you to live yeah, this right. life. Amen. If, if God forced you to live it, then you would have an excuse. When you came before the Lord, you said, well, Lord, you made me do it. Uh-uh. <laughs> it won't be like that. You have to do it on your own. Amen. Let me go on this. I can tell you so many things. Some, 
sometimes, sometimes, even those of us who are ill with God's spirit, we get weak. And when you get weak, that's when you show up, you got to hold on. You got to hold on anyway. And you can make it. Even in your weakness, huh? the Holy Ghost will teach you how to hold to right. God's hand. Yeah, in your weakness. That's the purpose. Then when, you know, when you're living in life and, and you're doing real well and, 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 and nothing really pressing you, no trials, no tribulations, it's all right. But when they come on yeah. and you're weak, <laughs> hallelujah. I think, I think when you go through, when you're weak, that's a, a star in your crown. Amen. That's a plus for you. All right. Because you were weak and you went through. You didn't give up. You didn't, you, you didn't turn God loose. Amen. Uh, some folks, you know, they, they ready to turn God loose at the end of the call. But you can make it. Yeah, you can make it. If you try, you can make it. Come on, okay, let's see what else. So shall it be in the end of this world. The Bible says, so shall it be in the end of this world. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels. And this is the way it's going to be. It's going to be a separation yeah. day. That's what he's saying. So shall it be in the end of this world. It's going to be a separation Amen. day. Amen. Good and bad is not going into God's kingdom. Amen. I'm coming in the very, very end. It, it's going to be a final separation. Amen. And I'm praying that I am what God is calling for us in that day. That I have been through all of my trials and tribulations and then have held up. Amen. And I want you to know again that you can do the why. The scripture we use all the time. Jesus said, my yoke is easy. This is an easy life Amen. when you want to do it. You want to do it. Amen. God will give you all the tools that you need in order to make it in this life. Every tool that you need. The word, God will send his word that will help you in time of need. Hallelujah. God will send a word. Amen. Huh? Sometimes you, you, you wouldn't think that a word will help you over this trial. We said we used to say help you over this hump. All right. Yeah, I heard of one word from God will help you. That's when you want to make it. But when you want worldly things more than you want God, then sometimes those things will come to you. And when those things come to you, worldly things, that is your reward. Hallelujah. That is your reward. I want something greater than all that what this world can give me. Okay. I want the things of God. I want to go in his kingdom. I want to be with God. Be with the Lord. Whatever God wants me to do in the kingdom, as long as I make it. And you know, and I think if I make it there, however heavy it is, I will be satisfied with it. Because okay. it's much better than anything that we have uh, have seen in this life is much better than anything that you have experienced in this life. It's something that automatically, when you when you move out of this flesh, your flesh is changed, we change from altar to immortality, and you find out that you you're gonna love that better. You won't be fit for it. Yeah. You're not gonna want this no more. Amen. God is good. Yes. God is good. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to make it. I want to live. I don't want to be separated. Yeah, I don't want to be separated from God. The Bible tells us like this, sheep on the right and goats on the left. <laughs> I want to be where the sheep are. They're on the right. I don't want to go. Somebody said, well, that, that goat from a distance looks like a sheep. Yeah, from a distance. When you get up close to him, you know. Amen. 
to eat a goat. A goat loves to butt. But a goat, a goat is always going, always going against the things of God. You be your goat. Start talking, talking against the word of God. That, that is automatic. A goat. Amen? Amen. Because what he speaks about against the word of God. He don't want to live it. In fact, he doesn't want anybody else to live it. Amen. Tonight we just by coming to a close, but I, I want you to know that the Lord mainly talked about in the 13th chapter of uh, St. Matthew's, I think it's about eight parables. I believe it's about eight parables. Somebody said it was about seven. But as I kind of looked, I think it was about eight. Oh, okay. About eight parables. And uh, it tells about uh, the parable of the sword. Uh -huh. And then after the parable of the sword, with the sword, he talked about the parable of the mustard seed. And after that, he talked about the parable of the unliving bread. He talked about the par parable of the hidden treasure. Then the parable of the uh, pearl. And the parable of what? The, uh, the net. The growing in of the net. Then the parable of what? The scribe. And then you know, more or less, those are the parables that God talked about in this chapter, which is which is a real good chapter for us to read. All those parables, you can read them and get something out of it. Every one of them. Then, what's good about this chapter too, that God explains each one of those parables. You know, he talks about the parable. What it is, you may not uh, understand it as he talks, but when he get through, he explains each one of them. I went over this one, yeah. you know, because the disciples <laughs> asked him yeah. personally about this, the wheat and the tare. Yeah. Thank God that they did ask about it, because it made us to know that wheat and tare look, to God, look alike. Sometimes saints and sinners. Mm. <laughs> On Sunday morning, All right. saints and sinners. Sometimes you can't tell them apart. Well, saints and sinners. Jeez. Hallelujah. They look alike. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, ain't about dressing. Yeah, if, if a sinner, <laughs> let me leave that alone. <laughs> but if a sinner dresses the same way you know. All right. You know what? Well, some, some of y'all don't know, but I know. They dressing like that. They're not just dressing, you know, just to be dressing in a certain way. All right. It, 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 it is something about dress. I'm going to know it's something about dress. Yeah. I, uh, may I say this? Amen. I, I used to be in, in judo. And when I, I put on, I used to put on my gi. When I put on my gi, I, I felt super. All right. Ain't <laughs> that right? Because of what? My dress. Yeah. He, you know, you, you psyched up. And I felt like the, the every one I was going to meet All right. when I put on the gear. It's something about dress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's something about dress. When, you know, a man put on a, a beautiful suit, uh -huh. he'd feel better about himself. That's right. But you, you let him come out with ragged clothes on. Oh, okay. You're trying to cover up, you're trying to hold him old and everything. Yes. Amen. God is good. Yes, He is. God is good. So it, it, you know, that's why I feel like that. You know, we 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 should just become saints of God. That's right. Don't don't look any kind of way. Because when we were in the world, we 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 did we dressed a certain way. Everybody knew us from the army, the air force. I was in the air force. Everybody knew us from the army and the navy. When we went downtown, they said, those are air Yes, sir. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank God that they knew who we were. So the parables, you know, the parables make us know a brief story to make a point. A brief story that makes a point. So just
tonight we just wanted to bring you a little about the parable. All of, and this parable is telling us, you know, we can tell what's going to happen in the end. Amen. He said, ain't you going to bond up all the tap together? Amen. And after they bond it together, tie it together, they will put it in the back and burn it. Amen. It'll be a great separation day. You pray. I'm coming to you. You pray that you make it in God's kingdom. Because it is going to be a separation day. Whether you want it or not. That's the way God has set it up. And everything we see, uh -huh. everything we know about yes. belongs to God. That's right. This is God's world. It's not someone else's world. Somebody else said, well, it's this man's world. <laughs> no, it's not his world. Right. This is God's world. And in the end, I'm here to let you know that God is going to take his world over. The meek shall inherit the earth. The earth. Yeah, God is going to give it back to us. Somebody think that they're going up to heaven. If you go up there, you're coming back down here. That's right. Somebody said that God prepared this down here for us. Get ready for us. And everybody is not going. That's right. The song says everybody that okay. sing about heaven or talk about heaven yeah. <laughs> ain't going to heaven. Yeah. Everybody who sing about it, everybody that talk about it, is not going there. You pray. Pray sincerely that, that somehow, some way, that you make it in God's kingdom. For God's kingdom, God's kingdom is from everlasting to everlasting. It's going on now. But we want to get in the part where we're going to be what? In the portion that coming to us after, after this life. It's from everlasting to everlasting. His kingdom is coming. His kingdom is coming. Where? Here. Yeah. When we pray, we say, Our Father, which art in heaven, thy kingdom come. We, did, did you know you were praying that God kingdom come in earth yes, as it is? Somebody said, Well, we praying that things straighten up here. If, if, if it comes here on earth, like it is in heaven, this, under this, it is just like the song said, this is like heaven to me. It will be just like heaven. Yeah. No wrong going on here. To, we thank God for you. We, uh, we was kind of slow tonight with our blessing. Hallelujah. But know that this is talking about yeah. what's going to happen to folk in the end. It's not just really talking about wheat and cattle. But it's talking about people being like yeah. being like tap. Tap would burn up and the wheat would kill. All right. God gonna keep the good and the bad got to go. How many know that? Amen. Amen. We thank God, thank God. Love everybody. Love everybody. You know, we got to we have to preach all of the word. Uh, we thank God for this tonight. We oftentimes don't preach too much. In the parables, but want you to know even something about that. Amen. And in the near future, we'll bring more lessons on the parable. Hope you got a thought tonight. Amen. And, and if you didn't understand it, give me a call. We'll talk about it over the phone. Amen. Amen. <laughs> May God forever bless you and keep you in our prayer. Amen. We want you to get ready, hopefully, uh, on Friday night. Hopefully we can be right back here on Friday night. Hopefully that you're watching us on the internet. Sorry that we didn't make I think last week we missed last week. Mm -hmm. Amen. If, if we miss sometimes it's very important. Mm -hmm. Something that really happened. Amen. So let's pray one for another. Pray especially for those who are sick and pray for those who are bereaved. And we know that Mother Curtis, she lost her brother, so Pray for the shack, the family, 
Amen. Not only that, uh, Overseer Salter lost his father. Let's pray for him also. We send out the donors out to all of the bereaved family here and elsewhere. We pray for you. And we know that God is able. We're about ready to go. Love everybody. We just hope everybody loves us. Amen. Amen. If you don't love everybody, then pray that God will give you the spirit of love. Amen. Because that is the spirit that one attributes that in God is love. Amen. Our hearts are clear. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide with his people.